Today we're going to learn the remaining three postulates to prove two triangles congruent. And the first one is angle side angle, which states that two triangles are congruent if two angles in the included side of one triangle are congruent respectively to two angles in the included side of the other. The, what I want to highlight here, just as we did with side angle side, is that with side angle side, the angle had to be included between the two sides. And here with angle side angle, the side has to be included angle, side, angle between those two angles that are congruent. For angle, angle, side, two triangles are congruent if two angles and a side opposite one of the angles in one triangle are congruent to the corresponding two angles inside of the other. So the side just has to be opposite one of the angles. So let's say A is congruent to X, C is congruent to Z. The side's opposite would be BC and AB, those two angles, so ZY and YX. I just need one of those segments or pairs of segments to be congruent. So let's say BC and YZ. So what about SSA? SSA does not prove two triangles to be congruent, and I'll show you why. Now if we write SSA backwards, it spells ass. Okay. reason why we don't write it that way as an option on an assessment is because you would start giggling. So now if I take and draw a triangle with side, side, angle, so I'm looking at this angle here, this side and that side, drawing it again, side, side, angle, so these respective sides are congruent. The reason why this doesn't work is because if I look at this side here, this is not the only triangle that could be formed by this side, that side, and this angle right here. This side in green, if I, at this vertice, just swing it around and pivot, it could potentially land here. So those two sides are congruent. So there's two possible options for triangles. We could have this triangle right here, again having the side side angle, or this triangle right here, having the same size angle and the same length for the two sides. So SSA does not work to prove two triangles congruent. The last postulate, hypotenuse leg. Two triangles are congruent at the hypotenuse and a leg of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of the other. Now, in order to have a hypotenuse, you must have a right triangle. So we prove that we have right triangles first. So let's say angle B is the right angle, so opposite angle B is AC, so that's our hypotenuse. So Y, right angle, XZ, the two hypotenuse would have to be congruent, and any corresponding or respective legs. So let's pick uh, leg BC, the longer leg congruent to the longer leg YZ. Now angle, angle, angle. That does not work to prove two triangles congruent. And if we take a look here, I'll show you why. So we have these two triangles here. Remember, angle measurement does not tell us anything about the lengths of sides. So I'm going to draw a scalene triangle. I can draw another triangle of the same angle measure, or measures, this angle here congruent to that one. So I have respective angle measures congruent, but the side lengths can be different. And it might be better to show you with one triangle, if I have this little triangle, that angle does not dictate that the side ends there. I can extend it and still have the same angle measure. Okay, so let's make this segment parallel to this segment so we end up with respective angles congruent. So corresponding angles, this would correspond here. So those two angles are congruent and this would land here. So angle, angle, angle does not guarantee that the triangles are congruent, meaning they have not only the same shape but also the same size. On the back side, we're going to determine if possible whether each pair of triangles is congruent, and if congruent, we're gonna we're only looking at the angle, side, angle, 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 side, and hypotenuse leg. 
if it's not possible to conclude they're congruent, write no conclusion. So we'll write NC for no conclusion. The first triangle, we have angle, side, angle. Do we have angle, side, angle in the other? Yes, we do. So these are congruent by angle, side, angle. Here we have angle, side, side. Or you can look at it as side, side, angle. So this is no conclusion because SSA does not prove two triangles to be congruent. In the next uh, example, we have two angles of one triangle congruent to two angles of another. So that would mean that V is congruent to U because the sum of the triangles or angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. So this would be angle, 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 which we know does not prove two triangles congruent. In the next one, we have two angles congruent to two angles. And again, we know those sides to be congruent, but we have more that we have more uh, measurements that are given or more information in this picture than I did in the last picture. We're also told that the angle opposite of this, or the side opposite angle B is congruent, and the side opposite angle G is um, congruent to AC. So this is the angle angle side. Could this be hypotenuse leg? The only option you could have hypotenuse leg for is a right triangle. And these are right triangles. I have opposite the 90 this hypotenuse, congruent to opposite the 90 that hypotenuse, and the long leg congruent to long leg. So this is yes by HL. In the last picture, we know that all vertical angles are congruent, so we have angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So these two triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. The proofs on today's notes, if you scan or look through the remaining problems, we have this proof uh, with just the givens provided, but the remaining three proofs have some statements already there. We just need to fill in the gaps. So that'll be nice to save some time. So in example number two, we're given that QP bisects angle P, so we know that one is congruent to two. And that's because an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. We also know that angle R is congruent to angle T. And the sides opposite would be QR, QT, and then QP. Since there's no way to get QR congruent to QT, I can't use these two sides, but I know that QP can be congruent to itself by the reflexive. So QP congruent to QP. So number four, we have proven the triangles to be congruent by angle, angle, side. Number two, it's given that AC is congruent to BC. CD is the altitude. Now, statements aren't, don't necessarily have to be written in the same order, but since I'm just filling in the gaps, I do have to try to follow along with this proof. S reason number two states um, an altitude of a triangle is perpendicular to the side it's drawn to, so I'm looking for a statement that talks about segments being perpendicular. And since CD is the altitude, CD is perpendicular to AB. Perpendicular lines give us right angles because perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. Now, we need to decide, given, so I'm going to put the 1 and 2 in there, with these proofs now that we have hypotenuse leg as a postulate, we need to look to see, do I have the hypotenuse of each triangle congruent? So is AC congruent to CB? And it is. So because the hypotenuse of each respective triangle is congruent, uh, I'm looking to use hypotenuse leg. So before we do that, we want to state that we have right triangles, which then I can refer to the hypotenuse as 
um, AC and CB. So I want to state that triangle CDA and, using the symbol not a plus sign, triangle CDB are right triangles. And that's because a right triangle has one right angle. CD congruent to CD, that's the reflexive property. And the triangles are congruent by hypotenuse leg. So I would star this step right here because if you're going to use hypotenuse leg, you need to indicate somewhere within your proof that you have right triangles. Number four, PT bisects QS. Well, if PT bisects QS, that means that QR is congruent to SR, which is statement number two, because a segment bisector, just like an angle bisector, divides a segment into two congruent segments. Number three talks about perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles, and it goes with those two statements here. PQ is perpendicular to QS, so let's put a one there and a two here as TS is perpendicular to QS. So angle one and angle two are right angles. Because I don't have PR congruent to RT, which is the hypotenuse of each triangle, I'm not going to look to use hypotenuse leg. So with every other postulate, we want congruency among our angles inside. So I'm going to state angle one is congruent to angle two because all right angles are congruent. Five says vertical angles congruent. Vertical angles are right here. So let's call those three and four. So we have one angle congruency, a second angle congruency, and a side congruency. This is angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So triangles are congruent by ASA. In our last proof, we have angle CBF congruent to TBG. We have TB bisecting JTG. So I'm going to refer to this as angle 1 and 2. They are congruent because an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. Number 3 is looking for a vertical angle pair. So that would be right here and here. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And TB, I'm going to move to 5. It says TB is congruent to TB. Well, that's reflexive. So in each triangle so far, if I draw them separate, we, oh, that's pretty bad. Let's try that again. We have angle, side. Is there any way to get these two angles congruent? Now, I know already that CBF is congruent to, oh, and right here, I don't want to refer to this as angle 3 because they refer to it as CBF. So angle CBF. Now you can easily see if both of these angles are congruent to CBF, then they're congruent to each other by substitution. So angle 4 is also congruent to angle T, B, G. So now I have this congruent to this, which gives me angle side angle. Um, substitution property. I forgot property here. So they're congruent by ASA.